Hey, Jeannie. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Jane. Uh, I see people hopping on. Good to be with you on this Tuesday morning. And I'll let people continue. <laughs> hey, Jane. We have a couple of minutes. So um, if you have your prayer book uh, and would like, or a Bible, and would like to turn to the appointed psalm for today, just to get a little bit ahead of the game, uh, I've chosen Psalm 99 among those listed, Psalm 99, uh, because I think it goes really well with the Old Testament lesson we'll read um, in just a few minutes. So uh, turn to that, Psalm 99. In the prayer book, it's on page 728. Good morning, John. We're letting people hop online. I'm going to wait the full two minutes and not start until 9 o'clock. Um, is the screen okay this morning? And the sound okay this morning? Good morning, Paul. Okay, I've got something back from Jane. She says, and John says, everything's working well. That's good. Good morning, Margaret. Things seem to be going well. So uh, as I was saying, as people were hopping online, uh, today I've chosen out of the Psalms appointed Psalm 99. It's on page 728 in the prayer book. Uh, if you'd like to go ahead and turn there or follow along in a Bible, just be aware if you're in your Bible uh, the words might be just a little bit different because um, most of us use New Revised Standard versions of the Bible, and the Psalms uh, are not in that same version. Good morning, Carol. I see Carol Johns has joined us. Excellent. I have right at 9 o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and begin. Uh, you should maybe have your service leaflet. So if you do, we'll start at the top of page one and then work our way through uh, morning prayer. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We continue now with the invitatory and Psalter for today, beginning on page 80 in the Book of Common Prayer. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. This morning, I'd like for us to turn to page 2 in your service leaflet, we're on page 82 in the prayer book, and we'll say together the Jubilate, the Jubilate on page uh, 82. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God, he himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. We continue now with the psalm appointed for today, Psalm 99, Psalm 99 on page 728. And again, let's say the psalm together. The Lord is king. Let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is high above all peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. O mighty king, 
lover of justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson appointed for today comes from the book of Numbers. We're in the 16th chapter of the book of Numbers, beginning at verse 20. Actually, the full citation is 16, 20 through 35. The Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from this congregation, so that I may consume them in a moment. They fell on their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one person sin and you become angry with the whole congregation? And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Say to the congregation, Get away from the dwellings of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. So Moses got up and went to Dathan and Abiram. The elders of Israel followed him. He said to the congregation, Turn away from the tents of these wicked men and touch nothing of theirs, or you will be swept away for all their sins. So they got away from the dwellings of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, and Dathan and Abiram became out and stood at the entrance of their tents together with their wives, their children, and their little ones. And Moses said, This is how you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works. It has not been of my own accord. If these people die a natural death, or if a natural fate comes on them, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord creates something new, and the ground opens its mouth and swallows them up with all that belongs to them, and they go down alive into Sheol, then you shall know that these men have despised the Lord. As soon as he had finished speaking all these words, the ground opened up, the ground upon them was split apart, the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up, along with their households, everyone who belonged to them, Korah, and all their goods. So they, with all that belonged to them, went down alive into Sheol. The earth crossed over them, the earth closed over them, and they perished from the midst of the assembly. All Israel around them fled at their outcry, for they said, The earth will swallow us too. And fire came down from the Lord and consumed the 250 men offering incense. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That's a hard one to listen to, I know. Um, I think today we'll still use uh, Canticle 9. It's on page 86 in the prayer book, or on page 3, the top of page 3 in your service leaflet, the first song of Isaiah. Let us say this canticle together. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you will, shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
turn now to the second lesson appointed. Uh, this will take from the gospel according, excuse me, from the gospel, I turned too far. <laughs> The Gospel of Matthew. We're in the 19th chapter now of the Gospel of Matthew, verses 23 through 30. Matthew 19, 23 through 30. Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it will be hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astounded and said, Then who can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but for God all things are possible. Then Peter said in reply, Look, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man is seated on the throne of his glory, you will have followed me, will sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the second lesson will be Canticle 13 on page 4 of your leaflet or page 90 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let's say together Canticle 13. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You were worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths and the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So before we continue with the Apostles' Creed, I'd like to say something about the saint whose day was in the commemoration uh, yesterday, actually. Uh, Tuesday this week doesn't have anyone listed, but yesterday's a person is someone who I am quite intrigued about. Uh, it was the commemoration of St. Alban. Now, let me give just a little bit of the backstory about um, Alban and his time. It's been a little bit of dispute about when he actually was uh, martyred for the faith, whether that was in the early 200s or the early 300s. Uh, it has been the long tradition of the church to commemorate uh, Alban's death on uh, as a date of 304, 304. That tells us something about the radical nature that I think of Christianity that this little religion born in the heart of the Middle East in Jerusalem by the year 200 or 300 had spread around the entire Mediterranean basin up through Europe and had reached the shores of what we think of today as England or Great Britain. So that's kind of compelling right there, right? That in less than 200 years after Jesus' death, there were Christian communities springing up in what we think of as England the birthplace of Anglicanism. And uh, what I think is really intriguing about Alban is the story about his conversion experience. One of the reasons that we think that uh, Alban lived in one of these two periods is because both of them were times of great persecution of the church by the Roman Empire. Uh, and the story goes that um, a priest who was fleeing persecution arrived to one of the Roman garrison towns in southern England and while he uh, entered in that city, uh, he must have disguised himself in some way so that the soldiers would not know that he was a priest of one of the local Christian communities. He was befriended by a Roman soldier named Alban. Alban was a pagan, 
again, a Roman soldier, someone who uh, would have, I think, had every right to kill uh, this priest upon sight, quite frankly. Uh, they must have spent some time together. We don't know exactly how much, but at some point it became comfortable enough in this relationship that was created for this priest to uh, speak about his faith with Alban. He shared the Christian faith in a way that was so compelling that Alban wholeheartedly received uh, the message of the gospel of Jesus. As soldiers began a house-to-house -house search looking for the priest, there was somehow the knowledge of a priest in the town got out, uh, Alban took the priest's clothes and put them on himself. He was taken away, tortured, and ultimately killed, becoming the first recognized martyr in Great Britain. That's some really fascinating story if you think about it. This person who's encountered a priest who's been taught the gospel and embraced it so much, so well, that he was willing to give up his life to allow this priest to flee, to go back to his community. I wonder, in a pluralistic world, which is not that different today in America than it was in the year 200 or 300, where there is a sort of a plethora of religious persuasions, uh, there are people of no religion, there is a fertile field for evangelism before us as people are seeking some kind of peace and happiness. They really are yearning, I think, broadly in our world for the good news of the gospel of a God who loves them exactly where God finds them. And that's really the story that's the heart of Alban, this saint that we commemorate, who was willing to embrace the faith to such a degree he was willing to lay down his life for another and so today we, or yesterday and today, we commemorate this wonderful saint, the first martyr in England. Let us uh, continue now by professing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's on page 96 uh, in the Book of Common Prayer or at the bottom of page 4 in your leaflet. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Continuing with the suffrages, show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Continue with the colic for today, the uh, colic for proper seven. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our colic for today 
is the Collect for Peace found at the bottom of page 99 uh, or on the back page of your service leaflet, page 8. Let's say the Collect for Peace together. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And then continuing now, turn to the right page here. Uh, our colic for mission is the one found on page 100 the bottom of the page. Together let's pray. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we continue with uh, the general thanksgiving, I'd like to bid your prayers today for all those who are on your hearts and minds. Remembering uh, as we see coronavirus numbers increase across the country, all those men and women who serve on the front lines and hospitals and uh, places where people are being treated, to protect them and to give them both the courage and the will to continue their work day by day. Continue with the litany. Our response is graciously hear us. Let us pray to the Lord who is our refuge and stronghold for the health and well-being of our nation, for those working on the front lines for our care, and for all who work in the service industry, that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, in your mercy, graciously hear us. For the isolated and housebound, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. Lord, in your mercy, graciously hear us. For our homes and families, our schools and young people, and all in any kind of need or distress, Lord, in your mercy, graciously hear us. For a blessing on our local community, that our neighborhoods may be places of trust and friendship where all are known and cared for. Lord, in your mercy, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we... Um, Continue with the general thanksgiving at the bottom of page 101 or in your service leaflet on page 6. I'd like to ask you if you know someone in the Holy Innocence family who lives in assisted living or in a senior living arrangement where there is still, um, many are opening up. It's still in many places there are floors that are under quarantine that you might take the time in the next couple of days to uh, pick up the phone and call somebody and just tell them that you're thinking about them and that you're praying for them and that you miss them. I think that would be one action item we could do this week. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. For Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. I hope you all have a blessed day today. I hope it's a day where you're able to get out and do the things that you need to get done safely and are staying well. We continue with morning prayer Monday through Friday at 9 o'clock. Tomorrow, uh, Kenya will have the, the liturgy. So tune in at 9 o'clock with her and you all have a very, very wonderful day. Blessings to you all. Bye-bye.